Welcome to part three of my depth first search recursive backtracking magic maze generating algorithm in the browser using P5JS project. So this is what I'm trying to make and where I am so far is kind of along the way there. You can see this something similar is happening here where I'm starting with a cell in a grid and I move to a cell next to it and then I move to a cell next to it and I move to a cell next to it and I never go back and move to a cell that has already been visited, the visited cells being highlighted in purple. So what are the next steps? Let's go to our Wikipedia page that had the algorithm very nicely laid out for us, and we can kind of see what we've done so far. So by the way, we're on part one right now. Um, part one, if the current cell has any neighbors which have not been visited, we did that already, what? Choose randomly one of the unvisited neighbors, we've done that already. Uh, skip step two, skip step three, step four. Make the chosen cell the current cell and mark it as visited. So all I've done so far in building this is step one and four. So I'm just moving from cell to cell to cell to cell, not revisiting any cells. Now, part, step two, push the current cell to the stack. This is something I'm gonna visit in the next video. What is the stack? Why do I have to keep track of the stack? What does that all mean? I'm gonna to get to that. This video, I'm gonna work on part three. Remove the wall between the current cell and the chosen cell. The chosen cell. Who is the chosen cell? Okay, let's figure out how we're gonna do that. We gotta like figure out in the code where that is or what we're even talking about. So there's, we already have the pieces of this somewhere. So here we are. This is the thing running. Here is our code. Let's go down to the cell object. And we can see here's one thing. So each cell object has an array called walls with four true variables in it. True, top, right, bottom, left. Top, right, bottom, left. So let's say the two cells are next to each other. One is to the left and one is to the right. One of them needs to remove its right wall, so that would become false. And the other one needs to remove its left wall, for, and that would become false. I gotta draw a diagram here to understand this. So let me come over this. This is tricky. And I think we could just get rid of this larger grid now. We kind of understand that. So this is what I mean. There's really four scenarios. <laughs> right? This is, uh, this is the cell, and this is the neighbor. This is the cell, and this is the neighbor, right? So this is the wall that needs to be removed. The cell needs its right wall removed. The neighbor needs its left wall removed. Here, the cell needs its bottom wall removed. The neighbor needs its top wall removed. How do we know which is which? Well, if this is i and this is i plus 1, right, the difference between, you know, one cell's, you know, uh, like cell index i minus neighbor index i, right, that'll tell us if it's to the right or the left. Because if this is i is 45 and this i is 46, and we take 45 minus 46, we are going to have what? Negative 1. So if we get negative 1, that means we have a neighbor to the right. So let's, let's sort of, <laughs> I'm tripping over lights and things. Let's start looking at that in our code. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write a new, let's look in the program, where are we? We're right here in the algorithm, right? This is, this is uh, step 1. And this is step four, according to that Wikipedia page, right? Step one is mark it as visited, and step four is set it to be the next one. Actually, step one is really here. Pick a random neighbor. Um, pick a random neighbor, mark it as visited, and step four is current equals the next one. So what I need to do is implement step two, which if you recall is, uh, not step two, step three, which is remove the wall between the current cell and the chosen cell. So I want to do something, and you know what? I'm going to make that in a separate function. I'm going to—it <laughs> already knows what I'm going to type. Isn't that insane? Uh, remove walls, and between what? Current and next, right? We need to figure out current and next. I want to remove the wall in between them. So now I just sort of thought of a function that's going to—and I could say a current dot remove walls next, but I'm just going to put it in a function and pass them the two cells figure out how they are in relation to each other and remove their walls. So I can just go all the way to the bottom of my code now and work on this somewhere else. So I'm going to say function remove walls a, b. So I just have two, whoops, come on. <laughs> when I hit save, it wants to get rid of all my white space on the bottom, but I want white space on the bottom. White space. <laughs> because I want to type it in here. Okay, so I want a generic function that takes two cells and removes the wall in between them, cell A and cell B. 
So what do I need to do? The first thing I need to do, I'm going to call x be a dot i minus b dot i. So this is exactly what I'm doing. The value x is the difference between this cell and that cell. So let's think about this scenario where this is cell 46 and this is cell column 45. This is a index i, b index i, a index i minus b index i is 1. So if x is greater equals 1, that means a dot walls what? OK, 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 come back over here. Uh, I want the left wall to be removed. Top, right, bottom, left. 0, 1, 2, 3. So I want A wall index 3 to be false. And now B should have its right wall moved, removed. Top, right, bottom, left. 0, 1, A, B dot walls index 1 equals false. Uh, else, if x equals negative 1, then I want to say, uh, then the, the inverse of that, right? If it's negative 1, then I want the right of A and the left of B to be removed. That's pretty good, right? This makes sense. And I'm going to use triple equals to be kind of more serious about, I'm very serious about my equals. <laughs> I believe in as many equal signs as possible to be sure we know what's going on. Um, so that should work. Now I need to do the same thing with y. Uh, and so y is what? a dot j minus b dot j. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing and say now if y is 1 or y is negative 1. Uh, and now, OK, so let's think about this. Let's say, I think we can figure this out without a diagram, but I'm going to do it anyway. So let's say uh, this is y, and it is row uh, 30. And this is a. And this is b, and it is row 29. So a uh, dot j minus b dot j is 1. So if that's the case, if a dot j minus, then a needs its top removed, and b needs its bottom removed. OK, coming back over here. A needs its top, B needs its bottom. 0, 1, 2. So A needs its top, B needs its bottom. Here, A needs its bottom, and B needs its top removed. I think we've got this right. <laughs> There's only one way to find out, and we are going to now call, did I already call remove walls in the right spot? Right here. Yeah. So here we go. Let's just try it. It should, when those go false, we shouldn't see the lines anymore. Let's just see how it goes. Whew. Huh. So I don't seem to be seeing anything happening here. So what's going on? What did I miss? Still kind of marching along, but I'm still seeing the walls being drawn. So what did I, what did I miss here? So first of all, let's just make sure this is happening. And so, okay, so that function's being called. All right, so what am I missing in that function? Um, let's look at what x is. Uh, whoops, console.log. Let's look at what this value of x is. Negative 1, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 1. So that should be, it seems to be giving me numbers that are the right idea. So let's just see, um, let's just log the object here. Ah, OK, yep, yep, yep. So uh, now I'm going to look at one of these and look at the walls array. Ah, so 0 and 3 got turned to false. So this is working. Like, stuff is happening here, right? You can see, by the way, this is like a nice way of debugging. I can look at each object. I can see its walls array. So what did I miss? Probably maybe something in the actual cell object. Oh, you know what I bet you is happening? Oh, I bet you, what a silly little problem. 
that I forgot to say no stroke here. <laughs> so the rectangle that I'm drawing to highlight the ones that have been visited always has its stroke. So it, makes, it draws the full rectangle no matter what. So I think that should be it. There we go. So we can see now as it's moving, the walls are being removed. Oh, beautiful. Oh, come on, give me a longer, give me a longer sequence here. Now, one thing I would like to do also, just to like keep the highlighting stuff going, is let's just go back to, um, to, uh, to the main program. And I'm going to call at the end here a current highlight. So I also want to be able to see which one is current. This is just a little, I, we're really done with this part, but I just want to visually add something that I think will help us. So in the object, I'm going to add a function called this highlight. And what do I want to do? I want to draw a, yet another rectangle, no stroke. And I will color it uh, some green color with some alpha uh, and draw a rectangle x, y, uh, with the same size. So I just wanted to add that really quickly and refresh this now. So now we can see also which one is the current cell. Okay, great. So here's the thing. This is actually working now and it's making our maze. Ooh, I just love it. Look, we can see our maze. The problem is it gets to a certain part. It's like trying to figure out this maze and it's done. It needs to go all the way back and break out somewhere else. Like it needs to go backtrack now and maybe once it gets to here, or actually all it needs to do is go here and then start going this way because that turned out to be a dead end. So it can start going this way. So this is where the backtracking comes in, right? This is where, in the algorithm, part two comes in. Push the cell to the current stack, and then if the stack is not empty, pop a cell, make it the current cell. So I need to discuss that. I need to unpack that, figure out that's a confusing piece. This involves a lot of additional concepts. I'm going to do that in the next video. So right now, if you're following along and building this, you should at least, though, have this much done. And just for fun, before I end this video, let's make this like 10 and let's like make it go fast now and hit, um, oops, hit refresh. And just so we can see, like we can see this is really doing something now. Like it's actually like just carving out this maze and in a, with a sort of finer degree of detail, it's gonna be a while longer before it finally gets stuck. But okay, so you see that we're almost there and we're gonna go to the backtracking in the next video. Okay, see you there.